KUAM News Hotspot is brought to you by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. The Menu, brought to you by King's Restaurant, always open, always local, and Ruby Tuesday Guam, home of the fresh garden bar. More than 25 years after Guam leaders first established an agency to lead the restoration and redevelopment of the capital city of Hagatnya, a master plan has finally been approved. A public hearing was held in November, and after submission to the legislature, it eventually lapsed into law after senators took no further action. But Hagatnya Restoration and Redevelopment Authority Executive Director Lasha Kasil clarified that the plan is separate and distinct from an implementation plan. It does not include or authorize specific projects, let alone multi-million dollar developments. Kasil says the master plan is more about policy and structure and how to engage with the public. It covers design guidelines such as colors, shapes, and materials to be used on the eventual buildings and structures that will go up around the capital city as it's redeveloped. Kasil says there's been lots of discussion about half a billion dollars in potential projects, but building them will come down to the availability of funding. In fact, Kasil says the raising money through such things as federal grants will need to be their main task going forward. All right, Ed Hoppin, everyone, and we are joined now by the chairperson of the uh, HRRA, the Haganya Restoration and Redevelopment Authority, uh, Ms. Maria Leon Guerrero, and the executive director of HRRA, that's uh, Lasha Casil. Thanks for joining us. Half a day. Thanks for Half having us. Okay, let's start out with this whole idea about the approval process. Um, I, I know that there are some in the legislature who say, wait a minute, we didn't approve anything or that sort of thing. Take us through that process and, and, and tell us exactly what was approved. Uh, whoever wants to start. Vasa, you want to take that one? Okay. <laughs> sure. So um, I believe that the, on uh, in um, October, um, we... My board uh, approved the um, latest edition of the Hagatnya Master Plan, and we submitted it to the governor. Um, I believe it was in September. And um, in accordance with our enabling law, and I'm, I'm pulling that up right now, um, it does state in there that, um, the authority shall submit the plan to the governor who, if he approves this, he or she approves the same, shall transmit the plan to the Guam le legislature in the form of a bill for adoption, amendment, modif modification, or rejection by the Guam legislature. Such plan shall not be effective until either appro approved by statute or it shall have complied with the provisions of this law and 45 calendar days have elapsed from the date of receipt by the Guam legislature of its transmittal and two legislative days have elapsed after the elapse of the 45 calendar days. So um, on December 5th, um, 45 calendar days had elapsed and the legislature was in session on December 6th and 7th. And therefore in accordance with the law, um, on December 8th, the Hagatni Master Plan did lapse into law. Right. And, and, but you were saying that it's not the actual plan itself, it's more the, the policy. Can you elaborate on that? Sure. So the plan itself, um, it's, it's more policy and structure and how we deal with um, the public, how we deal with the uh, inner office agencies, all the stakeholders. It kind of, it deals with the personality of what we're trying to create here in Hagatnya. It's completely separate from the implementation plan. Um, uh, the plan, the, the Hagatnya Master Plan, it, it consists of the design guidelines um, that will guide the colors and the, 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 the shapes um, 
uh, of the materials that we want to use in our public places. And um, it also um, is included in there is the map atlas, which is the baseline uh, for you know what we're creating in Hagatnya. Where are we starting from? Um, I know a lot of people get very, very interested in the, in the projects, but that's completely separate from, from the Hagatni master plan itself. Right. We couldn't approve, you know, the projects, they, they're all conceptual. There are half a billion dollars worth of, of projects. There's no way that we could have, have you know, passed that through the legislature. Um, you know, we'd have to look for funding. We'd have to look for um, resources. So so it's, it's completely separate. And I know a lot of people think they're both in the same, but... But, but they're not really. Yeah, and I think that was the confusion. Yeah, Maria? Yeah, I, I was gonna add to that. So the so what was what has actually lapsed into law are three uh, subcomponents, if you will, of the master plan. So Lassie touched on them, by the way. So one of them is the design guidelines, which is more like an aesthetic uh, guide, right? For, for building um, and all the different um, aesthetics of the city. The second one is the map atlas, which um, is kind of a um, basically um, it's it's got like a, a land use and zoning um, end state, a desired end state, right? And then the third one is the um, the, the the land use plan, I believe. Is that right, Lasia? Yeah, That's three. correct. Yes. Yeah. So. Uh, and as Lasia mentioned, it is more, uh, they are more kind of like a framework, a policy framework. Now the individual projects, there is a portfolio of proposed projects, but as Lasia mentioned that those were not included in what was passed into law. Those would have to be uh, addressed, you know, one by one as resources and priorities uh, change. So, so that comes later. Right. So I think uh, um, if, if the concern was that your your um, the plan was approved as opposed to just the segments of it, I think that might help mitigate what those concerns are. I, I would imagine. All right, so uh, we have to take a quick break, and then we'll be back to talk a little bit more about the the plan plan right after this break. All right, and uh, we're back now with the um, chairperson of the board for the HRRA and the executive director. That would be uh, Maria Leon Guerrero and Lasha Casil, respectively. All right, let's talk about the HRRA because it was established, as I understand it, back in 1997. So it's been more than 25 years now, Maria, um, since um, the, the uh, agency or the authority was stood up. Um, what has taken so long and you know where are you guys now in, in this whole um, continuum of trying to restore the uh, capital city of ours? So from my understanding how the HRRA came about, it was really a, a lot of these um, big uh, legacy names in business, these post-war business giants, um, the, the Leon Guerrero family, the Calvo family, the Adas, I believe the Moylans and some others, they came together and they had this vision that they wanted to restore our capital city. I, I think there may have been another name for the group that when it first came together, um, but the, the HRRA I think was made as an official agency, as you mentioned, uh, some, somewhere about 25 years ago. I can't speak to all the things that they did, but I do know that when, that when we were impaneled in 2019, um, that uh, in the Calvo administration, they had secured the funding to actually do, uh, redo a master plan. There was an iteration of it that had been done prior to the Calvo administration, but it never, it never got off the ground. Um, but at the Calvo administration, they got the money, they contracted with Matrix to substantially complete the plan. And when we came into the picture, um, the tasks had been completed by Matrix, but had not been formally uh, adopted by the board or, or approved by the governor or the legislature. So that's kind of where we picked up, where the former board left off. Um, and a lot of the time that we, uh, our first two years was really digging in, getting to know the elements of the plan because the, uh, the board that was on there, most of us were new to it. 
And then we had to spend a lot of time socializing the plan with all of the new agency heads, all the new leadership. Because again, uh, their predecessors may have been involved in the plan, but all of those directors didn't necessarily uh, know the details of it. So that took a big Inafa um, Maulik effort, as I like to call it. And, and we started that prior to the pandemic and we continue doing that through the pandemic. Um, and we got to a point where we um, solicited and reviewed and compiled the feedback from all of the uh, stakeholders and um, incorporated it and then got to a point where the board was comfortable to approve and send it to the governor for her review. Uh, so right. that's, kind of, that's kind of the history. All right, Blasha, is there anything else you can add to, to um, you know, the, uh, the background of the, and the mission of HRRA? Yes, um, um, as, as the um, chairwoman said, that, that there was a nonprofit had, that had um, come together in the mid nineties that um, formed the foundation for HRA. And it consisted of, you know, that the major business leaders here in Hagatnia, um, and that was in 1997, but nothing was really done until 2005, um, when a local architectural firm was was contracted to start the um, master plan, but funding fell through. And so in, I believe it was in 2015, uh, under the Calvo administration, they used funds from the hot bun to um, revisit that, that, that master plan that had been started and um, built on, on, on that. And when we inherited it, um, we had all the documents, but there were there was no support from from the previous board. There were there were no minutes. There were no um, uh, anything to support, uh, you know, that this plan. So we had to dive back into it and and reach out to all the stakeholders and. Um, we were nearing completion in, in the early to 2020 and then um, COVID hit and um, you know that kind of put a, a little pause on on it for us and and we did the board did approve it uh, last year and submitted it to the governor and she approved the first version and we submitted it to the legislature unfortunately they vetoed it the first time um, we took all their comments and feedback over the summer, we, we edited it, we submit, we submitted it to them again, and um, still we, we weren't able to satisfy them. Yeah, I understand there are some some concerns that just some some technical issues. For example, um, as you brought, as you guys know, you know a lot of the, the lots in Hagatnya are fractional, um, different ownership issues. Um, a part of the capital city is. Um, near swamp uh, land area where there needs to be additional uh, boring, for example, to s for the foundations. Uh, are those things that you guys have been able to overcome or how have you uh, addressed those sorts of issues? I, I can address that. So regarding the um, the swamp, um, one, of, one of the initiatives of HRA is the river feasibility study. That's always a big, uh, you know, the, the flood zone, right, is always, um, a concern when it comes to doing construction in Hagatnya. Um, so there is, we, we actually do have some funding that is earmarked specifically to complete that study um, and, and eventually it will be done. However, um, the thing is that it doesn't hinder development from happening. It's something that needs to be taken into account, but it's just, it's just kind of what we've been dealing with. And as you can see, there are a number of new developments that have gone up over the years in Hagatnya, the Nambos building, the new community first building, um, the, uh, the Chamber of Commerce building. So you have a number of examples of how developers have been able to overcome it. Um, so it's not a really a showstopper, but it is something that needs to be addressed over the long term. And we're making some moves to address that. Um, the other Remind me the other question. What, what the, was the it? fractional? There's a lot of fractional oh, lots yes. and, and ownerships, and, and I yes, guess um, there are, there are, and particularly in the kind of like the um, the Santa Cruz and Anigua area, there's a lot of there are many fractional lots um, in in that area. 
But if you if you look at the proposed um, portfolio of projects, uh, the uh, you know HRRA was very careful to um, uh, make sure that the projects that are proposed would be located on government owned land first of all, um, and uh, in areas that would not be contentious, such as the ones that you're mentioning. Um, so for the most part, the, you know, the big projects that are proposed would avoid the fractional uh, lots where there would probably be some difficulty in, in, in moving those forward. Yeah, and speaking of contentious, uh, um, Lasha, um, have, uh, has the HRRA made it a point to try and reach out to uh, neighboring landowners to make sure they're on board too with what um, the HRRA uh, is, is trying to accomplish eventually? Have you um community engagement has been um key since the very beginning. Um at, you know, as soon as we got the funding for this project, um Matrix was brought on our, our developers for the plan, and they um uh put out charrettes, which you know, with any the development of any type of plan, a charrette is when you reach out to the community and you get their input. Um, you get all their uh, advice, what that you want, you hear what the community wants to have done. And there were several days of charrettes that, that were done um, over in the old Turalahi building where Kaha was, where they invited the public. It was publicly announced um, via KUAM. There were lots of interviews, I, I believe, that were done. Um, newspapers, the, um, governor had had put it, uh, Calvo had put, posted it on his Facebook. Uh, senators had posted it up. And so there, there, you know, there were flyers that were sent out, um, invitations to all the senators, and they all came. And during those several days of charrettes, um, we got the, the the public's input on on what um, the city should grow and 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 look like. And if you look inside the, the 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 land use plan, all of their comments have been incorporated in the index. You can see. Um, their names, their comments, what they wanted to have put in there. And that's how the master plan was shaped. So I, I think it's false when we hear, you know, uh, people say that, that that people aren't being informed. I, I highly disagree with that. All right, we got to take another break, but we'll be back to talk about more specifics of the actual plan to revitalize and redevelop our capital city, Huaganya, right after this break. All right, and uh, we're back in our uh, discussion with uh, Maria Leon Guerrero and Lasha Casil of the HRRA, the Hagatnya Redevelopment and Restoration uh, Authority. All right, I wanted to talk about uh, the specific uh, projects that are planned. Is there a specific order in which you want them accomplished and, and, and talk about uh, the funding of those? Because I guess that will be uh, the, the key going forward is if we've got money to do all these things uh, that we have planned. Maria, let me start with you. Sure. So um, when we came into this, we we inherited a kind of a laundry list of potential projects. And of course, there are new ones that are, you know, that are being proposed from time to time. And so what the what the Board of Commissioners did is we came up with a simple rubric to try to prioritize these opportunities. Um, so factors such as, you know, what would be the uh, estimated timeline to completion? What's the rough order of magnitude of, of the cost? And then uh, also strategic fit. So looking at our, our mission and our vision, right? Which, uh, which is, um, oh, I should know this one off the top of my head, but it's basically to, there's a cultural restoration aspect. There's an economic development aspect, right? Um, and so we looked at all of those things and all the opportunities and said, okay, how 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 big of an impact will it make for for those priorities? Um, so we we took a look at that. We put we ran everything through, and then we got a nice prioritization list. Um, and it includes what I like about it is it includes some kind of big ticket projects and some more. Um, I guess more achievable things, more things that we could maybe attain faster. So a nice balance of quick wins, or quicker wins, if you will, and some more, uh, I guess, bigger aspirations. Um, so maybe Lassie, I'll turn it over to you to talk about um, what sort of rose to the top of, of our list. Sure. Yeah. So um, 
just to, to be uh, in more detail that the, the factors that we that we looked at, we looked at our what our mission statement here is at, at uh, HRA and and the four um, four things that really stood out um, in looking at these, we, we looked at does it support affordable housing? Um, you know, because that's in our mission statement. Does it create jobs, the project? Does it promote Chamorro culture? Or um, are there recreational opportunities? Um, and we we gave a score of one to four for, for all of those things. And um, I, and there's certain things that just rose to the top. We're, we're able to look at, you know, if we want to look at one of those things um, in order, uh, the thing that rose to the top the most was, you know, uh, bringing back recreational activities in, in Hagatnya. And that's where we came up with the Serena Festival. We, we looked at this cultural asset that hadn't been capitalized on. Um, you know, it's a part of our history and culture. Serena is, uh, her, there, we have Serena Plaza in Hagatnya. There's a statue there. We have a story. Um, and, and that's where the, that festival um, kind of popped up. Um, so the priority projects were, were that was one. Uh, another one is um, the Heritage Trail. And that scored high on our rubric. Um, so we're looking, we actually just met with some planners recently and we're looking at uh, trying to update the Heritage Trail and really making Hagatnya like the heritage um, destination for tourism. Um, we are looking at the land resources building, you know, recentralizing all these government agencies into one building down here that will help save us in the long run, um, you know, rent money, um, and as well as creating this this mass uh, here in, in Hagatnya that will will kind of um, resonate outwards and create more jobs, you know, for cafes. You know, if we have a thousand people working in Hagatnya. Um, we're going to need services. Uh, another project that rose to the top was um, restoring the Governor's Palazzo. And, and you know, we, uh, that's another thing that we just met with our planners recently to look at. So those were the four uh, priority projects for this year. Yeah, we, we've seen a lot of uh, the, the Matrix um, video, I think, uh, that showed a really nice uh, over flyover of uh, some of the projects that had been envisioned, such as uh, I think it's the River Walk is one, and uh, there's uh, something at uh, uh, Gatnia Boat Basin, maybe even a hotel there. Um, are all those still in play? And um, but um, will require you know slowly building up to those. Can yes. I they're all they're all still on, on the list, but uh, you know as we mentioned previously, uh, each of those would come with its own price tag. So we would just need to um, really explore, okay, what are the what are the funding opportunities? And as at this point, uh, we only have a rough order of magnitude estimate of those of what those would cost. And mind you, this was all pre-pandemic. So those would all need to be revisited as well. Yeah. Speaking of funding, so how would uh, the, the money uh, be raised? Uh, it, it, would it be a, an appropriation from the government? Would be there separate to private fundraising? How's that going to happen? I think it really depends. So, oh, go ahead. I, I, sorry. Um, so, I just want to reiterate that now that we have a master plan in place, that lays the foundation um, for us to access millions of dollars in federal funds. Um, you know, we've been meeting with federal partners over the past few months um, from HUD um, to that want to. It, invest in Hagatnia because it's considered a distressed city. Uh, but they, they, they were not willing to move forward until we had a plan in place. And now that we do, um, there's so many types of grants that we can access. Uh, so that really is the foundation for restoring the city. And um, most of those funds we're gonna look for are, are outside of Guam. Yeah. All right, Marie, you wanna to add to that? No, I, I mean, I think she, I think Lassia pretty much nailed it. I, you know, right now our operating budget is via government appropriation, but our long-term goal is to be self-sustaining and move away from that and really tap into uh, federal funding sources and other grant opportunities, which is how a lot of community development gets funded in the mainland. And we want to avail of that. 
All right, we're gonna take it one last break and then we'll be back to wrap up the show uh, right after this. All right, we're back and uh, we've got a couple of minutes left. So let me ask you to start, Maria, just tell us uh, why it's so important that we uh, revitalize and re redevelop our uh, capital city of Haganya. Absolutely. Um, Nestor, I would like to, if possible, just read what our mission is so that people really un understand why we're here. So the mission of the HRRA is to revitalize, promote, preserve, and protect the heritage and economic vitality of the city of Haganya by expanding the supply of low and moderate income housing, employment opportunities for the jobless, underemployed, and low income persons, and to provide an environment for the social, economic, and psychological growth and well being for all our citizens. So this is a mouthful, but essentially the way I like to distill it is to make Hagatnya a um, vibrant place to live, work, and play. And um, it, is, it is definitely something that we should strive for. This is our capital city, and we need to restore the just the vibrancy and the pride and um, and the life into our capital city. I know for anyone who was has was here when we had Fest Pack, we kind of got a glimpse into that, like how alive uh, our, our city could be, right, with that energy. And that's what keeps me going. Um, and I know that it can be a huge, huge asset to our people in terms of economic development, in terms of um, education, having a sense of a place and identity that would really serve visitors and, and locals um, and academia and our children. So uh, that's kind of what keeps me um, passionate about, about sticking with this. I think that it's worth it. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about what we could achieve. And all we need is the right resources and, um, and people and elbow grease coming together to make it happen. All right, uh, and Lasha, uh, about a minute left, uh, your final thoughts. I, I agree with them, Madam Chair, a thousand percent. You know, it's it's about restoring um, the, the glory of our capital city, which has been um, the center of Guam, the center of Micronesia, the center of, you know, Oceania for, for hundreds of years. There's so much history there. It's, it's the oldest recorded city in Oceania. Um, and um, we, we need to return to our roots. All right, that's uh, Lasha Kassil and Maria Leon Guerrero of the Hagatnya Restoration and Redevelopment Authority, which recently had uh, the master plan approved uh, by, well, I guess it was approved by the legislature, uh, but, but thank you so much for, uh, for explaining a lot of those things to us and, and best of luck going forward. Thank you, Nestor. Thank you, Nestor. All right, I'm Mr. Lecompton. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you again next week on The Hub.